So my name is Carol Erner. If you can't hear me, just say so. And I'm from Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, which is 100 years old in 2015. And uh, I'm not quite that old. I'm 84. But as you can see, I'm one of the ancient ones on the way out. But you guys that are still here, we're leaving you with some work to do. So I'd like us to introduce ourselves. I have, we have a list going around, but I think I'll send one a little bit later. So if there are things you want from us, just give us your email, and we'll just send you um, copies of some of these documents with all the hypertext. Because as you know, on the internet, the hypertext is often where that's where the details are. So we want to begin by getting your um, particulars, who you are, where you're from, why you're here in relation to nuclear weapons. And we'll go around pretty fast. We'll start here and just introduce yourself, your name, where you're from, and just a sentence or two about why you're here. There are very many of us, so we won't restrict you to few words. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Margaret Dunn, and I spend my winters in Itasca, Illinois, my summer near Montello, Wisconsin. So, Illinois is far south as I got. <laughs> and I, I used to be quite active in the in the nuclear and good resistance and so forth, but I. I've kind of not been too active recently, but I am still interested in the issues. And I guess I have to start getting up and getting yeah. more active. I'm Jan. I'm Jan Bendor. I live in Michigan. I uh, have always wondered what caused my mother's death in 1949 of thyroid cancer. And after my father died in 1998 of myelodysplasia syndrome, I started doing some research, and I read his diary, and um, he was training to fly the B-29, and he was at Roswell Air Force Base, and his diary says that uh, on the morning of July 16, 1945, he was on the tarmac doing pre-flight check, and the sky lit up like daytime, it was four in the morning, and nobody knew what it was. So I started looking at maps and I realized that my parents were the first downwinders. Mm. Was that Trinity? That was Trinity. And they weren't the only ones there. There were about 4,000 Italian and German prisoners of war. There were probably about 12,000 US service personnel and their spouses living on the base. So my, it's not surprising that my mother died very, very quickly after that. Um, and I did a short documentary about this, like what happened to all those people, because no one's ever said. And I've, I've done 10 years of research trying to find out, and I'm still working on it. But I, uh, I'm a member of the um, uh, veterans organization uh, Radiation Atomic uh, Veterans. Is this uh, Veterans for Peace or something else? No, they're actually uh, an, an umbrella organization for all veterans who are exposed to radiation okay. throughout the the uh, Bikini Atoll and all of the t the above ground tests. Are you? Is Lincoln Grouse part of it? I don't know everybody involved okay, in he, the group. He was from St. Louis County. Yeah. He was yeah. After. But he was not specific. Right. I talked to a, a, a lot of them. I, I, um, I, I had correspondence with Tom Dolan, who was the last survivor of the 19 soldiers who were marched out to watch Trinity while it blew up. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm working on a proposal for a documentary series about all of the downwinders, and that's all of us, because the CDC has said that we all are um, carrying nuclear fallout in our bodies now. And, then there's and it's causing havoc in our, in our 
uh, DNA and our chromosomes uh, going now to the fourth generation. Okay, great. So, I mean, awful, but great. But if somebody has so, to talk about it. It's I'm glad awful. you're part of us, and that's, that's exactly what we need. Um, John, I skipped you. So would you introduce well, you. yourself uh, and why you're here? Yes, I wanted to say something about uh, your card. Yeah. Uh, my name is John Owen. I'm from West Angeles. I've been involved in uh, uh, all things that I do here on the West Coast for uh, 30 years. And uh, we just stopped testing. And, uh, and Santa Rosa is closed. The group of the was on its last legs. And, uh, uh, we still need to get rid of them. In terms of your comment, uh, through the has experience in APT, we had rather extensive contact with this many down members we could find. Well, people from Southern Utah, more than people from St. George, who all used to live to be 100, now they're all dying at 50, and they're very unhappy. Uh, do you know Nevada Desert experience at all? Do I what? Have you been in touch with Nevada Desert no, experience? No, no, I, I would like to. Yes. Uh, 702. 646-4814, and tell them who you are, and uh, th th there's a lot of horrible stories that we probably want to hear anyway. So I'm just here to learn more and connect with people that are, um, share the same, we need to get rid of this stuff, and it's just way too late, we should, we should have, they should have given up by now. No, and you've had some time with Catholic workers? Um, well, they, you know, it was when Reagan started dropping bombs, talking about dropping bombs 30 years ago, it was, uh, well, you know, it's uh, civil disobedience is voting with your feet, and uh, so I got arrested with them 30 years ago uh, to get Rockwell out of the nuclear weapons business, which oh, we did, yeah. which we did, yeah. but. Um, they sold it to somebody else, so, you know, um, and I got arrested with them, and I volunteer um, with the Catholic worker downtown. I was on the road with the Alliance of Native Americans for many years, and, uh, you know, various related projects, and uh, I got tired of doing a lot of driving, and I just tried to do things locally. But this is beautiful country you have here, and I never, Never been anywhere in this part of the world, so so it's nice to have this reason to come here. Very green, isn't it? <laughs> Very green. I used to be in the green party too. But, uh, <laughs> okay, we're getting a little more than one sentence for most of you, so if you want to add more later. But to me, this is very important. So. Um, I'm Elizabeth Barger. And Elizabeth Barger. Um, okay. I live in Tennessee. And uh, I've been active uh, at different levels against the nukes since the 50s. And uh, when they had, well, anyway. Once since the 50s? Yeah. Good, me too. And uh, of course I live near Y12, and we're trying to stop the $80 billion weapons building plant that they want to put in there. Uh, work with OREPA, O-R-E-P-A, Ralph yes. Hutchison. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, we're also planning to take a caravan up to the Y-12-3 hearing on the 30th of August. Very good. Anyway, okay. so we Is that Oak Ridge or is that separate? That's Oak Ridge. Ridge. Robin? Yeah, uh, my name is Robin Lloyd. I'm from Vermont, Burlington, Vermont, and uh, we have one nuclear power plant, Vermont Yankee, and we have a very unique situation there where the state legislature is going to close the plant. Duh. Mm -hmm. All right, so is it closed? No, <laughs> because, you know, the FEC has said, well, it, uh, it, it, it is allowing it to continue until the Public Service Board, made up of three men, will make a decision. Now, they could decide to close it. I think they are prone to go that way, and they will be making the decision in the fall. And I think that's going to be very important, a state, in a sense, a, a state closing down a plant. I don't think that's happened before. So uh, we're working on that. 
major states' rights I'm issue. A of Wilson. Yeah. Actually, Michigan did close down a nuclear plant uh, in 1984. The thanks, state itself. Thanks to our then Attorney General, Frank Kelly, the great Frank Kelly, who finally mm -hmm. shut down. Which one was Shipman? It was it was in uh, Midland, Michigan, and oh, okay. it was um, a nightmare. And oh, interesting. And now that I think about it, Roe in in Pencil, in uh, mm -hmm. Massachusetts was closed down, and possibly by the state. But I think this uh, for the state legislature to have voted to close, I think is is uh, really. Mm -hmm. I think they're frightened that this could set the ball rolling. It's the same as the, the same design, isn't it? As they cheap. Yeah, yeah. 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 most of them, the GE oil and water. That was yeah. the voluntary debate. Uh, it was going to cost too much to uh, update it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually walked right on in. My mom and I, we drove right on in with the rental car. The gate was open, nobody, and there were a couple engineers walking. This is before 9 11. Uh, where was and this? I saw it. Well, right, 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 close to uh, Illinois Beach State Park, mm -hmm. up that way. And uh, I said, can I take some pictures? And they said, yeah, but then you're going to have to get out. But the gate was wide open, no security. We no, did they, a demonstration they still had fuel rods and inside. Similar. We got some but, old uh, anti-nukers here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was involved with the uh, Diablo prime stuff. Oh, good. Good for you. Yeah. Well, we'll give you a chance to come back on yeah. more of this. Oh, yeah. I just you're you're all in. Right, sorry. Right. Yeah. Uh, and we have a group in Wilk that's well. There are other people involved, not just Wilk, getting arrested at Vermont Yankee once a month. The rest of the time they do legal demonstration, but once a month they chain themselves to the gate or something like that. And uh, anyway, so let's go on. Your name, your organization, and where you're from. And a little bit about, I said before one sentence, but um, you can make it a little longer if you've got more to say. And we'll finish going around here and get you know, I'm Larry Thorson. I'm, uh, I'm from Miami. I am here, first of all, for the Veterans for Peace, which I'm a member of. And then I thought, this is a terrific organization, too. So I'm trying to drop in on sessions here. I'm a retired. Uh, uh, Associated Press reporter. I worked as a foreign correspondent for a long time. And uh, my, my beginning days with the AP starting in Philadelphia in 1970, the, the bureau chief there said, Larry, I want you to go out and do a, do a roundup of all the nuclear power plant projects that are happening in Pennsylvania right now. You can imagine how many were going to be built in 1970 in Pennsylvania, and it's nearby waters. And, Quite a few, it turned out. Uh, I wrote a series of stories. One of the, the, the first one started off with, I was given a, a tour of this nuclear power plant that was under construction. And it turned, it was a famous place, a three mile island. Uh, which later, some years later, it did you know what. Uh, but anyway, this was, the nuclear power and nuclear incidents were, a, a, as I worked overseas in many places, were, um, uh, I would say it constituted roughly maybe a quarter of uh, the important news stories that I worked on over a, a 20 year, 25 year career with the AP, including the Chernobyl, where I was based in London then, and I was sent to uh, Sweden because they were reporting that uh, they got this burst of radioactivity in Sweden, and you should go over there and, <laughs> and, and, there and, and help, help uh, take care of that. <laughs> and then later working in London, of course, we dealt with all the fallout uh, from that. And then uh, later I was in Japan. I visited uh, Fukushima as a, as a, as a tourist, uh, more or less, a foreign, foreign press tour. Later I was transferred to, to Germany after the, uh, at the time of German unification. And the first thing the Germans did was close down the nuclear plants in uh, eastern Germany that were built on the Chernobyl model or it's a subsequent uh, somewhat better protected uh, reactor. So it's something that I, the nuclear power and the, the dangers of it are, have been a, a big factor in my now closed uh, professional life. Very good, very bad, but very good. Are your articles online? Uh, have they been? Some of them are yeah. probably still, yeah. 
Would you say your last name again? Thorson, T H O R S O N. Okay. David Slade, PM from St. Louis. I am with Veterans for Peace. I'm here for both conferences. Actually, a Bolter, our past president, turned me on to this. I had no, no, no idea this, this was going on. Uh, I joined Veterans for Peace back in 2005 because a friend of mine, Bud DeRaps, who's 88, he's, he was a member of Wilf. He, uh, he's been an active uh, anti-war person going down to uh, Central America and going over to Iraq for the water project. But uh, he's why I joined. Uh, I've been aware of the nuclear issue because we had Weldon Springs, which was a processing plant, and Mellicrat, which was one of the early contractors uh, for uh, uh, enriching refining material in downtown St. Louis. Uh, Wallace Springs was a super fund, and it, it, they, they made it into a little museum now, you know, with a walk in the uh, learning center. But uh, I'm, I've been following uh, St. George and all the different areas. Anyway. Okay, glad to have you with us as well, changing the world. I also do public access shows. I used to have a bunch you of You do public shows, what? Pu public access TV shows. Uh -huh. oh. And I've been running a lot of. Uh, 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 and I'm drawing a blank on the guy, Carl Grossman's stuff and other uh, anti-nuclear power. Um, I'm Joe Scary. I'm here from Chicago today, and I was uh, part of the group speaking uh, just earlier on the panel about drones. So I work on a, a network uh, nationwide of people working against drones. And um, I'll just mention a couple of uh, details. We have a very active anti-war committee in Chicago, so I'd like to bring some of this information back to them. Uh, we have an outfit called the Nuclear Information Service in the state of Illinois because Illinois has the highest concentration of nuclear power plants in the country. And uh, there is, in fact, a conference that has taken place now, twice uh, running an annual conference called the Atomic Age at the University of Chicago, I think, in particular as a filmmaker that. Um, and I, I just can't resist sharing briefly a story, which is that um, I became involved in the anti-war work that I did in part on the, on the strength of the work that my sister has done for many years working against nuclear weapons. And also, after a few years ago, seeing a friend from Japan for the first time in 25 years, and I said to him, what are you doing now? And he said, well, a funny thing happened. I went to teach philosophy in Hiroshima, and it wasn't long before I became involved in the effort to stop nuclear weapons and in fact, uh, uh, work with this group to ban depleted uranium. So I'm ah, glad yeah, to see this yeah. up there. And he said, yeah. so now I'm not just a philosophy professor, I'm a peace worker, mm -hmm. and you should be too. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And our, our last. One. I'm Mary Beth Gardam. I'm with Women's Oh, Mary Beth! I've never seen you before. <laughs> we work together all the time. Uh, I'm with uh, Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, and I chair the Corporations versus Democracy Issue Committee here. Uh, Where are you from? I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, but soon to be a soon to be moving to Florida. Don't ask me why. Hey, nothing wrong in Florida. <laughs> well, I don't know. Hurricane. Yeah, oh. it's Trayvon Martin. Where do I begin? Oh, you know, you um, well, we need your help. <laughs> we're, um, I've been doing peace work since uh, 2001, and uh, I took taking our corporations versus democracy study course for me to put the connect the dots between corporate interests and militarization. Uh, profit says, uh, Eisenhower said, well, as long as war is so profitable, we'll see more and more of it. Um, and that brought me to work on the nuclear issue. In Iowa, we just this year, after three year struggle, defeated uh, a mid-American energy new nuclear power plant. Yay. Um, but I have to say that the arguments that helped us were, were not environmental or peace. They were purely about the economics of the situation. Mm -hmm. 
and I urge all of us to bone up on our energy facts and realize why nuclear energy is so inefficient and overly expensive compared to greener options and to prevent these energy companies from doing the advanced charging. They start charging, or they try to start charging even before they start building the plant. Right. And if you can attack them on those grounds, uh, you'll do much, you'll get much farther. We were able to ally with some very strange bedfellows. Uh, Walmart in Iowa joined our coalition wow. because they didn't want to have to pay uh, higher rates for energy. And the AARP, uh -huh which was very concerned about what higher utility bills would do for their members and other seniors. Uh, and I have to say that those two allies were much more effective than our peace and environmental allies. Uh, so I, I think we should think out of the box when it comes to this issue and start uh, recruiting and joining the efforts of groups that we would not normally think of as Wonderful, Mary Beth. We've already used up half an hour on introductions, but to me this has been a very important and revealing part. Um, so now I think we'll have time for two of our many sections left. I, I wanted to mention yeah. one thing. Missouri has one nuclear power plant in the middle of the state, Callaway County, and they were, Ameren was pushing it in this, uh, paying for work in progress. Mm -hmm. they, we, we, the statewide said no, we voted on it, the, the legislature overturned it, uh, but, the, but they were trying to get the second unit put in, but now it's going to be many. Want to comment here before we go on? Yeah, uh, Alexander is very much into many news, so we're really having a hard time with that. He's generally sort of for a Republican, fairly reasonable, but this pushing of mini nukes and, and, and you know, to continue with nuclear... By mini nukes, you mean the... the small car, the small the modular... Power again. Yeah, and nuclear yeah. power. Small because modular reactors. Pushing yeah. for different mini nukes, which are just... <laughs> oh, even right. more well, <laughs> we're, we're also, you know, fighting yes. the thing at Y-12 to become... Okay, so that's Alexander. Uh, yes, uh, Lamar yeah. Alexander. Okay. A very dangerous Yeah, person. I've called on him many times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you can still come in on these issues as we go along, because we haven't left any of them. Did you say much about yourself? No, we're, we're, we're about to do that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm Carol Erner. Um, I'm more ancient than the nukes, though I read about them in a weekly reader. We talked about getting young people. I'm about to leave the planet. Um, I'm 84, but I can't stop until I leave, because I'm leaving a grandchild behind. I'm leaving the whole world behind, and I love this world, and I love all its people, even the awful ones. <laughs> Daniel Rumsfeld fascinates me. <laughs> Shady? Shady? I haven't decided what to do with him yet. But it's love that drives me. That's part of my passion. And I'm also passionate because, well, I was born to care about these things. I was born a pacifist, so I had to learn it gradually. But by the time, and I worked for the American Friends Service Committee and their Peace Department, for Friends Committee on Nationalization, uh, Nationalization. For, for 12 years. But I married a man who also, he was a conscientious objector, who wanted to work in developing countries and help them move forward. And so we spent 35 years abroad. He worked with governments, I say at the top, but I'm not sure which was the top and which was the bottom. I volunteered with the poorest people I could find, tribal groups, abandoned women, prostitutes, children, um, who were the victims of the kind of development my husband was working on. And he was totally sympathetic with me and helped me get up 
and I helped him come down. So he made a terrific team. It wasn't too great for his job record, but <laughs> he managed to keep getting jobs. Ended up in education, which he loved. Okay, so my passion was fed by what I saw of the U.S. policy. I lived under American-supported dictators for most of my adult life, and um, they were talking about democracy, but it was pretty hard to find any sign of it in what we were doing, and the people I was working with were victimized by it. So that's my passion, my core passion. Um, and I came home determined to end militarism in the United States, not dreaming what a huge problem that was going to be. But I'm not very effective, I haven't done it, but there's so many people working on it, I still have hope. And uh, so we're going to move ahead. I just want to say a little bit about Wilf and the workshop, and you can come over into my time as a result. Uh, I'll give you half an hour. Um, the Wilf was formed in 1915, before I was born, by women horrified at World War I. And it was horrifying. And they were determined to stop it. And they were determined to stop war. When they, and they did a lot. They helped get the League of Nations going. They helped get the law. They helped get the World Court. They did a tremendous amount. And uh, Jane Addams, <coughs> I know that name, was one of the first, and Emily Greenbaugh. Um, the Jane Addams won the Nobel Prize for her work with Wilk, and Emily Greenbaugh won a prize for hers in 1945 for helping with her work with Wilk to help start up the United Nations. Um, and we're working ever since. We work on everything, like Mary Beth, on the personhood of corporations. Everything that we have going on in this democracy conference. We're just a few people, but we're just scattered all around working on all of it. And um, the same thing is true of our democ Ours, Ellen and I are co-chairs of Wilf National Disarm End Wars Committee. So we're still working on these core issues, and we're scattered everywhere. And our workshop will show this. Um, and you show it. You're scattered everywhere, too. So our women are working very hard on the issues in their neighborhoods. Shutting down nuclear power, stopping depleted uranium, going after these corporations that are profiting from all this nuclear business. Um, they're working also on, ah, <laughs> on the, um, one of our Native American members has really stimulated us to work on shutting down uh, uranium mining on native lands where 70 to 80 percent of the nuclear industry <coughs> is located against the will of the Native American people. So we're working on all this and it will reflect here. But for me anyway, it's part of, I came out of the, I'm almost done, I came out of the Women for Peace, Women for Strike for Peace. In fact, Portland, Oregon, the women there were the first ones to organize go out on the street, contact the governor, the mayor, the president, the president of Sri Lanka, and everybody else they could think of. Jackie Kennedy, Kennedy himself. And um, that was 1961. So I'd already worked, well, I was already working for the FSC at that time. And um, I think we became human dynamos because our philosophy was, you worked as an individual on what you believed in, what your passion was, what you felt right about signing, what you felt right on going out on the streets for. 
and somebody else might work for other things and you might not agree with all of it. That was okay. That was their thing. But if you did agree, you supported them. And as a result, we were a whole bunch of human dynamos in Portland, Oregon. And the Women's Strike for Peace saw what we were doing, adopted the same pattern. We were not organizations. We were unorganized. I suppose we were anarchists. <laughs> but we were getting a lot done. And so that's the way I still look at Wilf um, and at our committee. Work with women. Men may be different, but with women, work according to their passions. Because you can't herd cats, and women are like cats. They've got to do what they're programmed inwardly to do. So let them do it. Try to help choreograph it. And let's go. So. <laughs>